Hello and welcome back to Black Cat PC. Today we're going to discuss common power faults on the Dell laptops, such as plugged in not charging, consider replacing your battery, and your AC cannot be determined. We'll try and go through them step by step. First of all, we'll talk about communication errors. Right, so as I've discussed in previous videos, Dell laptops have three, three methods of communication, well, three components on the laptop that communicate. You've got the motherboard in the BIOS, you have the charger, and also in the battery. If there's something wrong within the circuit, you'll get an error. The error isn't always that relevant to the, you know, the fault. It could be a DC port, it could be a motherboard failure, it could even be the battery. Um, but what I'll do, I'll start off by showing you if your adapter's got a fault, what sort of message you can get. In this scenario, this is a working laptop. In this scenario, what I'm going to do is power it with an adapter that's underpowered and won't give it the correct amount of power. So, turn it on. And you see here, we have an alert. And what this alert is saying is we've put in a 90 watt power supply when the machine's actually asking for 180 watt power supply. Um, in this scenario, what it'll do, it'll power the laptop, but not charge the battery. And the reason I'm showing you this with a working machine and with a working adapter is this also manifests itself with a failed adapter. In that scenario, I'd recommend replacing your AC adapter first. Now with the laptop on, same 90 watt adapter, this machine should have a 180 adapter and you see there, it only says plugged in. And again, this is because it's only sending 90 watts through. If I left this on, this adapter would start getting warm because it's really trying to pour as much power as it can. If we had a docking station in this, as I said, this laptop, laptop takes a 180 watt, we'd have to go one step higher and get the 240 watt PA9E. And this is because the docking station need, needs power to power itself as well. So if you are debating on getting a docking station for your solution, Check your current adapter, if it's for example a 130, you'll need to get a 180. Now let's look at another solution to fixing a plugged in not charging or an AC cannot be determined. First thing I'll do before buying anything would be to power off your laptop, disconnect all the external devices such as you know USB dongles, I've got one in now. Um, then disconnect the AC adapter. If you can, disconnect the battery. Then press and hold the power button down for 20 to 30 seconds. And this will release residual charge within the laptop, in the capacitors and other components on the board. Then reconnect the battery and connect the AC adapter. Boot the laptop to BIOS. Um, that's normally by pressing F2 on the start. That is with most Dell laptops. Uh, and you would do this when you see the Dell logo on the screen. Then press F9 to load all the faults for the BIOS. Okay, but if this didn't fix your laptop, I'd then recommend checking, like I said before, the pin in your adapter. I would also recommend checking your DC port. So, in here, you'll have a center with four or five pins going around the outside. In your adapter, you have a center pin that's really difficult to focus on. There we go, you can see it shining just in there. And that's normally recessed by about five or six mil. Don't try bending it back because it will weaken the pin and you'll just cause yourself problems later down the line. Another thing definitely to watch out for this is a very common one. If you haven't checked, if the customer hasn't checked the port and the adapter only goes in that far, this will be either 
DC port, and it's just inside, or again, the adapter. Okay, now we have the battery. First thing we're gonna do is visually inspect the battery. We wanna make sure there's no swelling, um, the connectors look good. Um, I'll show you on this particular board where the connection points are. So you have this part here going from the battery and then you just follow it along to the connection on the board. Um, the way you remove these, you've got to be incredibly careful. You don't pull them upwards, you pull them away from the plastic. So I'll show you here. Whenever we work inside a machine, you always disconnect the power, whether it's a laptop or a PC. So obviously we don't have it plugged into the mains. First thing you do is unplug the battery. This is just fabric on the end here. I've just pulled it away like this. Okay, and then on the battery, it's a bit more difficult in this case, a bit more difficult in this case, because you've got this insulation on top of the, um, one of the chips on the board there. But again, you slide it away from the battery, just like so. Away from the battery, just like so. So I've just pulled it out like that. Okay. Right, with the battery, like I said, check for swelling. I've got an example here of a battery that is swollen. This is a very popular XPS battery. This side's fine. Yeah, as you can see on the camera, that side is not. You've got swelling. I'll put it to the side so you can just get a, get a clearer view. That is swollen and it can actually push your palm rest up off of the laptop and damage all the tabs along here because it just pushes the screws out. So all these little metal tabs just sitting inside the plastic shrouds, they just get pushed through and they pull out the socket and then the customer will have to pay a lot of money if it's not in warranty to have the palm rest replaced, the back, place, back plate replaced and the battery. And that can cost many, many hundred pounds. Um, but yeah, so visually inspect the battery. Whilst I'm here, another common problem is the CMOS battery. You might be getting a message in your BIOS saying um, replace your BIOS battery. Just when you start the laptop, that's this battery just here. And they're incredibly easy to remove. Just get a prising tool and there's a recess. I'll bring it closer again. There's a gap, you've got the shroud around it, and you give it just a little bit of pressure, and they always fly off across your table. Um, and you can pick these up online nice and cheap. I think we have some on stock on the website. I could put a link in the video description. I know this one's good, so I'm gonna pop it back in. That's it for visual. And as I mentioned earlier, the DC port. Okay. So, I'm just going to disconnect the battery again. Always do it before working on the machine. So, as we discussed earlier, DC port. So, how do we replace it? I've got one screw just here. Tiny little screw. Just a little plate to hold it in place. And that goes through to the main board. And to remove it from the main board, all I did was a tap on it here. Just pulled it away. Never pull upwards, you'll rip this connection socket off the motherboard and that costs a lot of money to replace or you'll need a new motherboard and they'll love charging you a fortune for them. Um, if you order your replacement, all you'd have to do is put the new one into place. I'd recommend connecting the motherboard in first. So the way around it'll go is the tab will always be on the top and then you would just slide it into place, just like so, until until you can't feel any more resistance from it sliding.
and then we'll route the cable around parallel to the fan. And then we put the metal clamp back in place. Just like so. Okay, thank you very much for watching. Um, I will put a link in the video description for the blog that is linked to this. Um, it goes into more detail and covers the step-by-step -step on um, the power cycling and other key points I've covered in this video. We also have a blog on there for the best practice on use of a laptop. So how you should use your laptop going forward and I hope you find that useful. If you need any more information or want to get in contact with us, you can comment in the video below or visit our website for more information. Thank you very much. Bye bye.